Hello friends, have you ever struggled to securely connect your on-premises servers or external workloads to AWS services without relying on long-term access keys? Normally we use user access keys for that. Or maybe you have worried about the complexity of managing these credentials outside AWS. If your answer is yes, then in this video, we will discuss the challenges of securely integrating non-AWS workloads with AWS services and how one of this service, IAM Roles Anywhere, solves these problems. So let's dive in. So with AWS IAM Roles Anywhere, you have to create Trust Anchor, a profile and configure roles within that profile. So let's go to AWS console and see how we can set these up. So once you log into AWS console on roles, if you scroll down, you will see here roles anywhere. And this is a service which will be used to authenticate your non AWS workloads, all the requests which come from outside AWS, and it will securely provide access to those AWS services. Click on manage. Now here you see trust anchors you can create and you can create profiles. Now trust anchor refers to trust relationship between roles anywhere and your certificate authority. So we can create trust anchor. It will be created in region US East 1. Trust anchor name you can provide. I'll just give CA public. And now you can use private certificate authority or you can use external certificate bundle, either of it. Now if you use private certificate authority and with AWS certificate manager, then it will cost you somewhere $400, $500. But using external certificate bundle, you can have your own CA and you can just uh, create trust using the public key. So we'll use our own CA and I will show you the steps how to create a CA cert uh, using open SSL commands and that way we can use it. Once we'll have the public key, there are other settings here, notification settings. It will notify based on settings when your CA certificate is expiring. You can set your own 45 days, 60 days. And also it will notify when the end entity certificate expiry happens. So your client certificate, which will be issued by the same CA, if they are going to expire in coming days, it will notify based on the number of days mentioned here. So let's see how to create your own CA certificate. So you'll see the commands to create CA root private key and public key you have to have OpenSSL installed and then you can run these commands. So this OpenSSL command creates root CA private key. Now it's created. Next we'll do touch index and echo 01 a serial.txt file. I'll provide you these commands in description so that you can use as is to generate your CA private key and public key. Now here we'll create a CSR which is CA root public key request running this command. If you see here it has created the request root CMA dot request and we have to use root underscore request dot config for this what are the contents of this file let's see so here we provide details like country name state or province name common name those details and based on that request is created and the next command will generate the public certificate from the ca so if you see here it's generating for 10 years and it's asking we'll say yes one of the request certified yes database updated so if you see here root ca.pem file is created if we check this so if you see here this is a certificate so issuer the validity then subject common name is dev version 3 we have to ensure that your certificate has to be version 3 and it should be x509v3 so, so we have now CA private key and public key created also in the public key creation command if you see there was this particular file 
root certificate dot config so we'll look at this one also what exactly is this file and what it contains so root certificate dot config we'll have details about CS config so patch default is for validity of the CS certificate and other config details which you can change accordingly so it has key usage for search sign and digital signature I'll provide these files in description now we'll so we'll copy this we'll go back to and we'll paste so our trust anchor is ready now we can add tags if required and create trust anchor successfully created trust anchor now we'll create profiles which will have a predefined sets of permissions that are applied after successfully authenticating with roles anywhere so click create profile give a profile name um, let's say x s3 then you have to add roles to it now here I have already created a role s3 access I will show you this role uh, details but oh, you will see only roles which are created for IAM roles anywhere will be displayed here so I will attach that and then you can add session policies I will keep it default as is and then this session duration for how long you want to allow I think minimum is one hour you can have custom duration maybe it's 15 minutes which is 900 seconds yeah so if you say 900 to 432 seconds so let's say 900 seconds then apply tag or custom role let's create a profile so profile is also created now I will quickly show you the role which we have attached to the profile so if you go into role name just for now I've given permission full S3 access important is trust relationship you have to create a trust for roles anywhere so all the requests will be actually through roles anywhere service and then you can have conditional checks also now this role will work only if the request comes from trust anchor this particular ID you can have multiple trust anchors and it will match for that account with the trust anchor is matching plus the client certificate you can check the properties of the client certificate also so here I am checking OU you can even check common name also of your 509 subject and if they match then only the access will be allowed you can create multiple roles with different conditions and different permissions and then attach to the profile so now our anchor and profile and roles are all created now to show that we can access s3 service from my laptop I will request for s3 access and for that my laptop will act as a client and I should have client certificates which I need to pass in the request so that I can get temporary credentials and then using those credentials I can access s3 so now we'll see using our private CA which we have created using that we will get some client certificate also signed so that we can then run the request to get access to S3 for that these are the commands which will use to create client certificates using our CA authority so first we will run this command this will create client private key so we have client private key created here now we will create client public key cert request so if you see here request key which is the client's private key and it will create a CSR request and it passes client request config now what is there in this client request config let's see so it provides now similar config details where you can provide country or common name organization things like that and these are the subject names which you can actually validate in your role conditions so CSR is created now we will sign using CA is private and public key we'll sign this cert so here we are saying we need 
X509 certificate for 365 days validity using SHA-5112 so this is created now let's see what is there in client cert.config file which we have passed along with the request so it says the public certificate will only be for use for critical or digital signatures the client certificate is created we can validate this cert is good against CA cert so this is fine now we can use these private key and public key of the client along with the request we will provide them and we'll get the token and temporary credentials and then we'll see whether we can access S3. This particular EXE you have to get. Now you can download this from this particular link, Credentials Helper. It provides for Windows and Linux both, it was any helper and it has a command also what needs to be passed to get your credentials. So you have to pass your certificate, client certificate, your client private key the trust anchor ARN, the profile ARN and the role ARN which you want to access. So these five parameters you have to pass to get your temporary credentials. Now I have already created the command. So here this is the client certificate which we created just now using the OpenSSL commands and the client private key, the trust anchor which we have created, profile ARN, role ARN and we will run this and you see we it provided back the access key ID, the secret key, the session and the expiration. Now instead of getting the output like this, we can actually get the output into a variable. So temp credits have now the details and then we can directly set. So if we now do AWS S3 LS and we can access all the S3 buckets. Now to show that we were not able to access earlier, if I will start another session, and try AWS S3 LS. Now we run this because AWS signing helper is in this folder. And then we evaluate and now if we run the command AWS S3 LS, it works fine. So you can see that you don't need to create a user, you don't need to share access keys uh, to access AWS services from outside AWS, any workloads which are running outside AWS. Now I need to warn you here that this whole CA setup which I have created using OpenSSL command is good for development setup if you want to use this in production then there is a lot of other things which we have to do so this whole thing will work only for dev but for production setup don't try to use this as is i can help you to provide more details how the same can be done for production you can reach out to me i hope you like this session we'll see you in the next one soon thank you